One fact for every Pokemon owned by Ash. And also, this video is sponsored by Tokyo Tree and Sakurako, but we'll get into that in a bit. Let's do this. Pikachu. Ash's Pikachu has the worst RNG when it comes to paralyzing opponents, because in the entirety of the Pokemon anime, Pikachu has only paralyzed three Pokemon, and none of them were with his Thunderbolt, only by his static ability. So I guess Ash doesn't have plot armor with everything he does. Butterfree. In the early 2000s, Ash and his Pokemon appeared in numerous comic strips in American newspapers, and in one of them, Ash's Butterfree, as a Metapod, somehow completely deflects a flamethrower from Gary's Rapidash, which shouldn't be possible in the slightest. I wonder if this was unintentionally the first time the move Protect was used. Pidgeot. As of the last aired Pokemon Journeys episode, it has been 1,140 episodes since Ash released his Pidgeot, promising to come back once he finishes the Orange League. But finally, since Ash is getting a feral miniseries with all of his Pokemon, we will see these two reunite after all of these years. Bulbasaur. Aside from Pikachu, Ash's Bulbasaur has spent the most time in Ash's party, staying with him for a whopping 215 episodes. Charizard. In the Japanese anime, Damien states that his Charmander was so weak that it couldn't even beat a Poliwag. Then later during the Orange Islands under Ash's possession, the Pokemon that defeats Charizard and results in it starting to obey Ash is a Poliwrath, which is an awesome connection because it proved to Charizard that Ash wouldn't abandon him like Damien did. Squirtle. Squirtle is shown carrying Pikachu across the water in the episode The Flame Pokemonathon, which could unintentionally make him part of the first appearance of a surfing Pikachu. Also, another fun fact is that in the original anime opening, Brock's Zubat is holding Squirtle with basically nothing, so I guess Ash's Squirtle can fly as well. Kingler. Ash's Kingler is a battling prodigy, because in his very first battle, it single-handedly won Ash's first round in the Pokemon League, and no other of Ash's Pokemon has done this. Also, another fun fact is that since Ash caught Krabby in the anime, Game Freak upped the encounter rate for Krabby to 70% in Pokemon Yellow. Raticate. Ash's Raticate is one of Ash's most short-lived Pokemon that he has owned, only being under his possession for a mere six and a half minutes, since he regretted trading his Butterfree for it and asked for a trade back. Haunter. Haunter is Ash's first unofficial Pokemon, though in the episode Haunter vs. Kadabra, both Sabrina and Ash claim that Ash caught the Haunter. So. You captured a ghost Pokemon, did you? So it was up to debate whether it's his or not. Primeape. Among the Pokemon Ash has owned for more than one episode, Primeape holds a record for the fewest on-screen appearances, appearing in only two episodes, four if you include flashbacks. But funny enough, in one of the flashbacks, it shows Primeape at Professor Oak's lab with all of Ash's Pokemon. But Primeape has never been there, nor has been any of Ash's Pokemon he caught afterwards. Muck. Despite the fact that Ash has a battle with Muck a lot, nor kept in his party for that long of a time, Muck has appeared in every series of the anime except for X and Y, which is pretty wild. Also, just like Krabby, Muck was added to the list of encounters in the power plant in Pokemon Yellow, purely because of Ash's Muck in the anime. And before we continue with the rest of Ash's Pokemon, I want to give a shout out to Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video. Yeah, mini me here, you know the spiel. And I prefer Sakura Co. Because every month with Sakura Co., they send you authentic Japanese snacks that also support local Japanese snack makers, with each box containing 20 traditional and artisan Japanese snacks, like Japanese teas and special Japanese tableware, like this. Yo, how many times are you gonna say Japanese? But I am tasting this Japanese tea right now, and I can just taste the Japanese flowing off my lips in Japan because it's Japanese, okay? But anyways, with Tokyo Tree, aka the superior Japanese box, they send you monthly pop Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time, like Sakura Pepso, Japanese say Kit Kats, ramen, and much more. And just like with Sakura Co., Tokyo Tree comes with a booklet too, that has a ton of information about Japanese culture and allergen info for every snack. Which is a good thing, because I am allergic to some stuff, and I don't want to be eating that stuff. Heh, <laughs> nuts. What'd you say, Mini-Me? Oh, nothing. Except for all y'all should totally get Sakura Co because they're giving away a free ticket to Japan to one lucky winner. And you can enter by using the link down below. Oh, that's pretty cool. And y'all can also use the links down below to get your own Tokyo Tree or Sakura Co box today. Just click on the links down below and use my code DOBS to get $5 off your first order. And then boom, you can taste and experience Japan in the comfort of your own home with these awesome snack boxes. Yeah, a big shout out to Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co for sponsoring the DOBS Nation. And now back to the video. Seeking. It is up for debate whether Ash officially owned the Seeking that he caught during the fishing contest in the episode Hook, Line, and Stinker. But if he did in fact own it, then this would be the second shortest lived Pokemon that Ash has owned, since he had then released it at the end of the episode. Mimi. Mimi is Ash's dad because clearly he is dating his mom. Because just look at this. But in all seriousness, Mimi is the only Pokemon that Ash owns that has a nickname. Tauros. Now, I'm not going to do 30 different facts for all of Ash's Tauros, so we'll just do one for all of them. And here it is. It is never revealed whether Ash uses the same Tauros in every battle, as every time he asks Professor Oak to send one of them from his lab, we don't know whether he sends the same one or a different one every time. 
Also, another fun fact is that later on in the anime, Ash is offered a Rhyhorn in exchange for his Tauros. But for some reason, Ash declines. Like, why? You literally have 29 more at Freshrose Lab. Lapras. Ash's Lapras is the only Pokemon and character in the anime shown to have aged between its appearances, so much so that Ash didn't even immediately recognize it upon its return. And if you're wondering, here's the comparison between its ages. Snorlax. Ash's Snorlax is shown using 6 moves in one battle. And funny enough, my friend the Aura Guardian raised Snorlax as Ash's strongest Pokemon purely for this reason. Heracross. Ash's Heracross is probably one of his strongest Pokemon, because it heavily contributed to taking down Tobias's hack Darkrai. Because in the battle, Heracross's Hyper Beam collided with Darkrai's Ice Beam, and then Heracross was put to sleep by Darkrai's Dark Void. But Heracross had an advantage because it used Sleep Talk and then landed a Mega Horn on Darkrai, which was the strongest Bug type move at that time. Bayleaf. Ash's Bayleaf is the first character in the anime to have a crush on Ash. It was even confirmed in the episode Once in a Blue Moon. Also, another fun fact is that as a Chikorita, Bayleaf was once a gang leader. But finally, it wasn't on purpose because a primate picked a fight with it and Bayleaf won the battle, becoming the new leader of Primate's gang. Quillava. In Ash's battle against Jasmine, Ash had his Quillava use Flamethrower on the Sandstorm that was created by Jasmine Steelix, heating up the sand and turning it into a heated tornado that knocked out Steelix and won the battle, which could have been the inspiration for the new move Scorching Sands. Also, another fun fact is that out of all of Ash's Pokemon, Quillava took the longest to evolve, at a total of 507 episodes between Capture and Evolution, which was longer than a decade in real world time between episodes. Totodile. For all we know, Totodile could have actually been caught by Misty, since Ash and Misty were competing for Totodile, throwing their lure balls at the same time. And it was never revealed which one actually caught Totodile, since they battled to decide his ownership. Noctile. Ash's Noctile's voice actor in both English and Japanese is Yuji Uda, who is also the Japanese voice actor for a lot of Ash's powerful Pokemon, like his Sceptile, Infernape, and Greninja. Cool. Yeah. Beedrill. Ash's Beedrill is the only Pokemon that Ash has caught and then given away. And if you're wondering, this would technically be Ash's most short-lived Pokemon, only being under his possession for 5 minutes in the episode, if you don't count his temporary Pokemon. Donphan. Ash's Donphan as a Pamphy is one of three of Ash's Pokemon that appeared in an upscale arcade game from Japan called Wobbuffet Fell Down. And I couldn't find any gameplay footage, but here's a promotional picture of what it looked like. Also, another fun fact is that Ash's Dawn fan as a Pamphy, again, is Ash's only Johto Pokemon that appears in the TCG. Larvitar. Unlike the other Pokemon that Ash has hatched from an egg, Ash's Larvitar is wild, as Ash has never seen or trying to use a Pokeball in order to capture it. Also, another fun fact is that Larvitar's experiences in the anime are proof that Pokemon are able to remember their time as an egg, as revealed in the episode Address Unknown. So when you're riding your bike back and forth for time on end, your baby Pokemon remembers. Swellow. Ash's Swellow's strength is on another level, because along with it being able to endure a thunder from Ash's Pikachu in the battle against Liza and Tate, it was able to crack a Metagross's head with Quick Attack in a battle against Tyson, which is kind of nuts. Sceptile. For a short period of time, Ash's Sceptile was Ash's weakest Pokemon despite it being fully evolved, because in the episode Odd Pokemon Out, it became completely unable to use its moves until two episodes later. And coincidentally, Ash's Sceptile goes from being one of his weakest to definitely one of his strongest, since it was able to finish off Tobias' Darkrai, which was a Pokemon that was supposedly never defeated before. Corphish. Ash's Corphish is Ash's only Hoenn Pokemon to be capable of evolving, but never doing so. And because of this, it tended to get jealous when Ash used evolved Pokemon over it. Also, another fun fact, when Ash's Corphish uses Bubble Beam, the colors of the bubbles vary per episode. They can be light blue, multicolored, orange, or just blue bubbles. Torkoal. In the TCG, there is a card of Ash's Torkoal that has a wrong type. Because, like we know, Torkoal is a pure fire type. But in this card, it is labeled as a fighting type. And in the TCG, fighting represents rock and ground, but not fire. It wouldn't surprise me if the creators of this card thought Torkoal was a fire ground type, since it does have an earthy vibe to it. And finally, this happened for a second time with another Torkoal card prior. Glalie. Ash's Glalie is the first Pokemon in the entirety of the anime to land a critical hit, since you can hear the announcer say that Glalie's finishing headbutt on Charizard looks like a critical hit. Apom. Ash's Apom was confirmed to be female in the anime, but the Shek dub kept referring to it as a male, and never corrected it, to the point that in the episode Battling the Generation Gap, Lila's Delcaddy's gender was changed from male to female just to make Delcaddy's cute charm activate on it, which is pretty ridiculous and funny. Star Raptor. Ash's Star Raptor was a comic relief character while it was a Staravia, because it loved battling so much that it would become depressed when Ash wouldn't choose it for a gym battle, and this is what it would look like. 
Torterra. Ash's Grotal evolving into Torterra was possibly the worst thing that could have happened to it, because as a Turtwig and Grotal, it was able to defeat several Pokemon. But once it evolved into Torterra, with the exception of Team Rocket, it never defeated a single Pokemon in a battle again. Infernape. Most of Ash's Pokemon left with Professor Oak remain there faithfully waiting for Ash's return. But Ash's Infernape is the only one to not have done this. Because in Pokemon Journeys, Ash's Infernape left for a few days to try to find and challenge Moltres to a battle in an effort to become stronger. And it even squared off against Ash's Charizard, while noting that Charizard defeated Articuno while Infernape faced Moltres. Buizel. Of all of Ash's Pokemon that have fought their evolved forms, Ash's Buizel is the first one to defeat his evolved form on his first try. Which doesn't make that much sense, but I guess it's pretty impressive. Gliscor. Ash caught Gliscor in an anime exclusive location near Route 215 in Sinnoh. And what's cool about this is that in Diamond and Pearl, you can find Gligar there, but only as a dual slot encounter, with the required game being Pokemon Emerald. Which I would say is a clever nod from the writers of the anime, since Ash came to Sinnoh from Hoenn. Gibble. Ash's Gibble had a running gag when, whenever it tried to use the move Draco Meter, no matter who Ash was facing, it would always hit the nearest member of the Piplup line, which most of the time would be Don's Piplup, which was hilarious. Unpheasant, or as I like to say, Unfazon. Ash's Unpheasant was once available as a random ed distribution in Generation 5, along with Iris's Axu and Silence Pansage. And what was interesting about this event is that the eggs had a small chance of being a shiny, which hardly happened for anime distributions. Oshawott. Ash's Oshawott had a strong rivalry with Dawn's Piplup, as they were both trying to flirt with the mythical Pokemon, Meloetta, and it's where these iconic expressions came from. Pignite. Ash's Pignite continues a tradition among most fire starters, being the third one to be abandoned by his first trainer before Ash took it in, with the other two being Charmander and Chimchar. Snivy. Ash's Snivy never learned any new moves beyond the four it started out with, so essentially it never changed in any way since its debut, which is pretty uncommon for Ash's Pokemon. Scraggy. Ash's Scraggy is the first dark type Pokemon to belong to any main character, although it has never learned a dark type move to this day, which I wonder if it's because the dark type is the evil type. Another funny fact is that Scraggy is the epitome of players trying to land the move Focus Blast, since it had to use the move on 9 different occasions, but only once it had actually hit the target. Levani. Ash's Levani is the first Pokemon of Ash's to evolve during a gym battle, which is pretty insane given that Ash has done 34 gyms beforehand, and that over 15 years had passed since the first gym battle with Brock. Palpitoad. Of all of the Pokemon that Ash has owned and still currently owns, Ash's Palpitoad has appeared in the fewest episodes, only appearing in 10. Another fact is that Ash's Palpitoad's height is inconsistent across the few episodes it appears in. In his first episode, it was around Oshawa's height, but in his second appearance, its height reached up to Ash's waist, and then later on, it went back to its original height again. Boldor. As a rock and roller, Ash's Boldor used a different variation of the move Sandstorm each episode he used to move in. Here's what it looked like in the episode Gotta Catch a Rock and Rolla, and then the episode Where You Go, Audino, and then finally in the episode King of the Mines. They all look completely different. Crocodile. Ever since Ash's Crocodile was a sand dial, it had always been wearing a pair of red sunglasses. And finally, those sunglasses must have become a part of it, because when it evolved into Crocorock and then again into Crocodile, the sunglasses evolved with it to be big enough to fit on his face every time. Greninja. Ash's bond with his Greninja is aura based, since it was revealed in Pokemon Journeys that Greninja can use aura. And additionally, Ash stated that his bond with Lucario felt somehow similar to his bond with Greninja. And here's what it looked like when Greninja was training his aura with Lucario. So I guess aura users can bond so much that they can practically fuse with their trainer, which might explain Ash Greninja. Talonflame. In Ash's match against Alan, the screen that displays their team shows Ash's Talonflame twice, omitting Ash's Halucha, which is pretty funny. Halucha. Ash's Halucha is one of the few Pokemon in the anime that has its own theme music, and this is what it sounded like. Gudra. Ash's Gudra was completely undefeated, having never been knocked out in a single trainer battle up until Ash's battle against Alan. Another fun fact is that Gudra and his pre-evolutions were voiced by Jason Griffith, who famously voiced Sonic in all the Sonic the Hedgehog games from 2005 to 2015, and even Sonic in Super Smash Bros. Noivern. Ash's Noivern as a Noibat inside its egg revealed Ash's Talonflame's ability to be Flame Body, and coincidentally, this made it tied for the fastest Pokemon to hatch from an egg, with it hatching in the very same episode it was obtained in. Also, along with it being the fastest Pokemon to hatch, it became the fastest egg Pokemon to evolve, with only 34 episodes in between. So that means Ash's Noivern gained 47 levels during that time, and to my knowledge, it only battled once during those episodes, with some side training to go along with it. So Ash probably gave it a ton of rare candies off screen. Rotom Pokedex. Ash's Rotom phone displayed Ash's Rotom Pokedex's typing in the episode that they meet in, and this confirmed that Rotom Pokedex is a pure electric type. 
roll it. Ashes roll it inspire Rolla's Ultra Moon Dex entry, where it states that Rolla ought to like to stay in small dark places to make its nest, like a trainer's bag. Roll it number two. Yeah, Ash technically owned a second roll it while he was demonstrating the H's Snonian Pokeball, but he released it right after. And also, yes, this would be Ash's shortest lived Pokemon beating his Beedrill, only being under his possession for a mere 30 seconds. Lycanroc. Despite Ash's Lycanroc being a rock type, it loves taking baths since it hates being dirty, and it will even fly into a rage when it realizes it's not clean. Incineroar. As a Litten evolving into Tauracat, Ash's Incineroar had a unique evolution animation. Instead of the usual blue glow, it was surrounded by flames, with some parts of his body glowing with a purple aura as it evolved. Nebi. As soon as Nebi evolved into Solgaleo, no one ever called it Nebi again. Also, another fun fact is that Nebi's favorite food in the anime is Star Candy, which incidentally is based on Kompito, a Japanese candy that also inspired the designs of the Pokemon Minier and the items Revive and Max Revive, and moreover, it inspired the Star Bits from the Mario Galaxy games and the Star Fragments that appeared in both The Legend of Zelda and Animal Crossing. Naganadol. Ash's Naganadol may not officially have been released by Ash as a Poipool, because when it returned as a Naganadol, Ash didn't have to catch it again, but instead he just returned it to the ball that he had it in before. Ultra Beasts. Buzzwool, Stakataka, and Faramosa were all temporarily caught by Ash so that he could take them back to their home. Melmetal. Ash's Melmetal as a Melton had a darker colored nut than others of his species, since his nut was once used in a car belonging to Team Rocket for a short period of time. Another interesting fact is that Melmetal is Ash's only Lolan Pokemon to never use a Z-move, even though Ash had the Steelium Z to use Corkscrew Crash with. Rotom Phone Ash's Rotom Phone funnily considers itself superior to Rotom Pokedex, since it claims that it has a multitude of functions. Dragonite Ash's Dragonite is the first permanent Generation 1 Pokemon Ash has caught since its Snorlax, who was caught a whopping 1001 episodes prior. Another fact is that it's been even longer since Ash had a Pokemon that evolved in the same episode that it was caught in, with the last Pokemon being Primate, which was caught and evolved 1070 episodes prior. Gengar Ash's Gengar's color scheme is different from other Gengar in the anime series, and for comparison, this is another Gengar seen in Journeys. It makes me wonder if this might be a light Gengar, like the light Pokemon seen in the CCG expansion Neo Destiny. And if it is a light Gengar, does that mean that it's not evil? Since most Gengar are pretty menacing. Lucario. While eggs in the anime used to have a special design based on the species they hatched into, Ash's Lucario's egg matched the appearance of the 12km egg in Pokemon Go. Surfetched. None of Ash's Pokemon had ever defeated an Elite Force Pokemon until Ash's Surfetched defeated Drazda's Mega Altaria. Another fun fact is that Ash's Surfetch is the only Pokemon in the entirety of the anime to have landed more than one critical hit, since of course that was required for Surfetch to evolve. Dracovish. In the Japanese episode Satoshi vs. Donde, the announcer of the World Coronation series identified Dracovish as the ruler of ancient Galar when discussing Ash's team, which is pretty interesting. And finally for Dracovish's second fact, this might be the final Pokemon that Ash will ever own, since he is being retired from the anime. So we'll have to see if Ash will capture one final Pokemon in his Farewell series. And if I had to guess, I'm going to put my money on Goldango, since it's the 1000th Pokemon. Let me know in the comments what Pokemon you think Ash might own after Dracovish. And to go the extra mile, Ash has typically owned a ton of different Pokemon, and I'll just put a montage of all of them on the screen now. Ranging from Pokemon like Ponyta, where you raced in the Pokeathon and won it by it evolving, to Pokemon like Meowth, where he was given as a rental Pokemon for the Pokemon League exam. And then he had Pokemon like Latios, Latios, and Rayquaza, where they battled against Hoopa Unbound in the 18th Pokemon movie. And after counting, there are 42 Pokemon that he temporarily owns throughout the entirety of the anime, which in total comes out to 109 Pokemon that Ash has owned since he debuted in Pokemon nearly 25 years ago. An end of an era. And there you go, one fact for every Pokemon owned by Ash. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hey, you want to see one fact for every protagonist in Pokemon? Well, click right here because I literally made a video for that. And also, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.